I think it starts with you. It does. The first line is, hey, everyone, I'm Sarah Moore. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's your line. Oh, <laughs> everyone, I'm Sarah Moore and I'm here with Mike Levy and today we're talking about our five value-minded hardtails. We're going to boil it down to which ones were our favorite, which ones were the best value, and which ones are for which riders. Our five hardtails include the $1,100 Canyon Stoic, the $1,400 Norco Fluid, the Vitus Sentier that goes for $1,450, and then for the cross-country folks, we also have the BMC Two-Stroke AL1, and for $1,669, you can get yourself Rocky Mountain's Growler 40. Nice work. <laughs> they might all have precisely zero millimeters of rear travel, but we've got some pretty different bikes here. And there's actually a $570 spread between that Canyon Stoic and the Rocky Mountain Growler. Let's start with that Canyon Stoic. Sarah, we both rode it a bunch. We both liked it a lot. Now, of course, there's obviously room to upgrade here. Uh, what might want to be changed down the road? I mean, I think if you're gonna be riding that bike for a long time, you're definitely gonna add a dropper post and you're probably gonna wanna upgrade that. A long that. time? If I rode that bike for 20 minutes, I'd wanna <laughs> drop a post, Sarah. That's a good point. Okay, if you're gonna ride that bike at all, you're definitely gonna have to upgrade. And then there's that Shimano 1142 cassette. You're probably gonna want a little bit more range uh, so you can just upgrade that. Yeah, so we're not really faulting Canyon here. I can't imagine how hard it is to spec an $1,100 mountain bike and then send it off for some assholes to pick it apart on the internet. Not like... Can you imagine how <laughs> jealous that product manager is? They're like, the other guy gets to put an $1,100 fork on it. My bike costs what your fork costs. That's not fair. Right. But we should underline that the Canyon is ready to ride out of the box. And the fact that you can find a dropper seat post online for between 100 and 200 bucks, and the same goes for a wider range cassette, and I mean, that puts you at under $1,400 still. Which would still be the least expensive bike on test. Right, and then you're ready to go. But as is, the Canyon Stoke's a pretty fun bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really impressive that you can just ride it out of the box. So moving on to a couple other hardtails, two that are very similar. Norco's Fluid HT1 and that Vitus Sentier VR29. All the letters. You got it. <laughs> um, yeah, if I had to choose between these two, uh, I would go with the Vitus. I think it's got better suspension. It feels more capable planted on the downhills. That being said, it is a direct to consumer brand. So if you wanna sit on that bike, you've never even sat on a mountain bike before, or you wanna see if it's the right size, yeah. it will be easier to go into a local shop to see your Norco. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. If you're a brand new rider, this is your first mountain bike. I mean, if it was me, I would wanna sit on the thing and pedal it around and see what it was like. So I would probably lean more towards the Norco just because I can go to a local shop, sit on it and see whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it might be easier just to form that relationship. And if you have questions about maybe what you should upgrade down exactly. the line, then you have that shop uh, partnership. Exactly. All right, Sarah, I think I know the answer to this one, but if you were a cross country racer and you had exactly $1,500 American to spend and you wanted a bright orange bike <laughs> with a really low stem, what bike would it be? Oh, what does that sound like? That sounds like the BMC two-stroke. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I mean, this bike is perfect for that beginner cross-country racer. Like if you're just interested in getting into cross-country racing, you know, you don't have a huge budget, this bike is such a great choice. It's just screaming, take me into a cross-country race. Right. I want to go uphill really fast. I want you to be wearing Lycra. Let me say Lycra. <laughs> Should I go get my Lycra? <laughs> yeah, we know that the BMC is definitely a bit of an outlier in this group. The other four hardtails are more aggressive. There's no doubt about it. But for an entry level cross country bike, this thing makes a lot of sense. 100 millimeter fork, it's got a lockout. Most importantly, I'm really impressed with the frame. Mm -hmm. So down the road, it turns out that you do like cross country racing for some reason. <laughs> you can buy yourself some really light expensive wheels and put them on the aluminum frame and mm -hmm. make your bike a whole lot lighter and faster. But way before you spend money on expensive carbon wheels, I would say you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to a dropper post on this bike. Yeah, it's hard to argue that. I think that would unlock a lot of the BMC's potential. You could still do your cross-country race on it. You could still wear your Lycra even. 
But I mean, cross country is just a whole lot more fun when the seat's not up your ass, isn't it? Like Definitely. you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get thrown out the front door. It's more fun. It makes the bike way more capable. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of more capable, let's move on to a bike that I think both of us had a lot of fun on, the Rocky Mountain Growler. No liker to be seen anywhere near this thing. Yeah, let's go from one extreme to the other. So we have our cross country race bike with that BMC with the low stem, right. narrow tires, and then we're going straight to the Rocky Mountain Growler. Totally different bike, right. a lot slacker. Uh, it's got really big wide tires. But Sarah, I knew all that coming here. And to be honest, I was still like, meh. I don't want to ride these hardtails. Like, I ride all these fancy full <laughs> suspension bikes. It's I'm true. old and my ankles hurt. I don't want to ride hardtails. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah. I don't have as much fun on them. Or so I thought. Yeah, yeah. And then we got on the growler and holy like, Yeah, I was giggling the first time that I was riding that bike down the trail. I was like, I it feels so much more capable than I was expecting it to, which is like the best feeling ever. Right. As soon as I got on this thing, um, it just felt like a ton of fun and I was instantly riding it like it was a full suspension bike. It's a lot more capable than the other hardtails. I was going quicker on it. I was having more fun. Yeah, for me, the Growler was the surprise of the hardtails. I mean, I'm surprised that I enjoyed riding it bottom line, period. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to ride it more. And I think, to tell you the truth, I wanted to ride that Growler more than I wanted to ride some of the full suspension bikes. Ooh, those are coming soon. Don't have those videos there right? yet. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about that bike that makes it so comfy, so capable feeling right away? I mean, you're just sitting on it. It's got a longer reach. It's got a wider handlebar. The cockpit just feels comfortable. 800 millimeter handlebar. So yeah. with that Rocky, I think it's the position mm -hmm. of the bike. Um, that wide handlebar, 800 millimeters, short stem, and then the 64 degree head angle. It's just a degree slacker than the other bikes, but it puts that front axle a little bit farther out in front of you. And the end result is it just, it feels fun and it feels capable and like there's room to go fast on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for the trails that we like to ride, that would be the bike that would be the best choice. For sure. All right, Sarah, so the hardtail surprise for me was the Growler, and I was just surprised how much I liked riding a hardtail, to be honest. What about you? I mean, that Growler surprised me in a good way, but so did the Canyon Stoic 3. I don't want to sound like a snob, but I didn't think you could get into mountain biking for $1,100. That sounds like a snob. I know, how do I say that without sounding like a snob? I don't think you can. There's no way to. Yeah. But if you want to get into mountain biking, the Canyon Stoic 3 is a really fun bike, and that's kind of a number that a lot of people who are interested in mountain biking will throw around is like, can I get a bike for a thousand dollars? And I always thought the answer was no, but the answer is yes, you can well, start mountain the biking. The answer's pretty close. The answer's pretty close, yeah. Pretty yeah, close, eleven $1 hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree with Sarah too that the Mail Order Canyon offers a really good entry point to the sport. And it's a bike that can grow with you as you get better and enjoy the sport more. You could put nicer stuff on it, drop or post, wider range gears, better fork down the road if you wanted. The frame is nice enough to do that. And that's definitely an important thing to mention. So there you have it. That's the Hardtail Roundtable. Stay tuned for more videos from the Value Bikes field trip, as well as another roundtable where we compare all the full suspension bikes. I don't feel like it's a roundtable. Eh, close enough.